hello lovely Gemini I'm really up for doing your reading today I'm like this is oh hello I've got a jumper this is the Gemini moment okay <laughs> okay I'm going to take one more as well we're going to have two overall energy cards just to kick us off what do we need to know for Gemini, 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 lovely butterfly, Gemini, sun, moon, rising, oh, oh, oh my god, okay, saucy, I knew it was going to be a big one as the actress said to the bishop, right, seven of wands, which is Mars in Leo and itch itchy, it's a kind of a fighty kind of a card, it's feisty, it's when you are on your absolute sort of top of your mountain, you're saying, here is my line. Gandalf, you will not pass, okay? Not, Gal not Gandalf will not pass, but you know what I mean. You're Gandalf with the big stick, thumping it on the ground, thou shalt not pass. Everybody got that? Thou shalt not pass. Okay. I like it. It's peppy, it's sassy, it's fiery. And every sort of month or so, one of the fire one of the signs that is not a fire sign is getting fire and you're getting fire. Yes. So I like it. Gemini with some fire stuff going on is well, you're oxygen and you're you're all about air and, and what does air do to fire? Look out. Look out for Gemini. What do you get to go with it? Oh yes, you get the devil. Hmm. When you get the devil card, it can mean, and it does slightly mean here I feel, that there are some kind of underground toxic energies going on. And I think you can sense them. I think you can feel that something is needing to be given oxygen rather than hidden. And for me, the definition of something that is toxic is something that oxygen can't get into anymore. It can't really breathe because breathing is sort of exchanging and changing and expanding and contracting. And when something is toxic, it just stays in this little kind of state. Well, let me just switch my phone off. Okay. Yeah, it just stays in this kind of state. And it can be, it's like water needing to kind of move. Otherwise it becomes stagnant and that's no good for anyone. Bad things happen to it. So there's a situation in your life, Gemini, and this could go back a bit. Because when you get the devil, it can um, have roots into your family history. It can have roots into a significant past relationship. It can be things like um, in Korea, where you had perhaps a very narcissistic boss. I don't know if you've come across that before. What a treat that is. When you're working for somebody who's not really in charge of their own mental health and is putting yours at risk by being able to dictate to you. So that can be anything from a boss to a parent to a partner, but you are, for some reason with this seven of wands, able to stand up for yourself, but also I don't think, I think this is in the beginning, well, it's, it's still under wraps. So you're getting a feeling that you want this to come out, okay? The fire is building within you and you want to confront the demons of this. Gosh, that's a lot just for two cards. I knew it had to be your reading. Okay, let's continue. We're gonna look at whatever comes up, okay? So it could be love life. We're gonna look at, oof, that card that flipped over. There will be an extended reading as there is every month. The extended is when we get to the end and then we revisit and clarify some of the cards. We do a love reading for the extended. We look at the love cards. We look at the dynamics of the relationship. We do some channeling. We get down and down and dirty. If you want that, it will be the first link in the description box. OK, so see how it resonates when you get to the end. The Hermit. 
what does the hermit have in his hands? And you are the hermit in this, but you're not the only hermit in the game, which is weird. Okay, so a lamp, which is fire. You are accessing where the heat is in a situation, even though you're an air sign. Hermit is not at all a natural card for a Gemini. Neither is the devil, really, but the hermit is all about you know, introversion, not putting anything out there, not chatting, not exchanging, not walking abroad socially, whereas Gemini, you're the butterfly, you know, you're supposed to be landing lightly on everything. The universe is saying to you here, this is going to require a little bit of downtime. And you may find that you are donated some downtime from the universe, however that happens. My advice on seeing the devil with the hermit is if you can make that downtime, if you create that downtime yourself, then you're in charge of it. Then you're leaning into it. If you continue to know that there's an elephant in the room, you know, that there's something under the carpet, but you're off and about in the way that us mutable signs often are, where we're sort of skitting around here and skitting around there and, oh my God, there's an elephant in the room, but I don't want to know about that. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to distract myself. The universe will do something to make sure that you stay still enough to pay attention. Okay. That's what the universe does. So if you can invite this energy, please do. Spend some time meditating, spend some time, and I feel like it is alone time, or at the very least, time with people who are so familiar to you that it almost feels like you're alone when you're with them, you know? Okay. God, you're getting all the big guns. Next card I get for you is the Hierophant. The Hierophant is about accessing spiritual knowledge. It can be through an, another, like um, a spiritual practice or some guidance, learning something, could be a YouTube video, could be this very tarot reading. Um, it could be a sage, it can be somebody that you talk to, it can be you meditating and connecting with something but there is something you need to know here. Something you need to know, something you need to access, something you need to blow open the doors on. <laughs> eight of Cups. Big card. Eight of Cups, it's an eight, so we have infinity, but we also have the feeling of movement. All the eights are about movement coming towards, walking away. This one's walking away. You want to find out what you need to know and then you need distance. I would say that even before you find out what you need to know, you need the distance to do so. Either way, whatever is, I think Eckhart Tolle calls it your pain body, whether that's a situation, a person, a relationship, you need to put enough emotional, physical, spiritual distance that you can decide whether you want to drop it, let it go, or whether it's something you can work with. Okay. God. I like this reading for you. It feels extremely strong, very, very concentrated in the way that you know, sometimes you think, oh, I wonder where this is going. I'm like, I know where this is going, almost from the first card. Okay. I would also say, <laughs> God. Oh, God, you just got the magician. Major, 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 major arcana. Oh, God. I would say, right, and I'm going to show you the cards with the camera here. I mean, come off it. You've got the devil, the hermit, the hierophant and the magician. This is, 
you. Sometimes when I get the magician, it's somebody else coming into your life or the other person in your drama or whatever it is. This is you and you're able to magic a response from the universe almost. If you put yourself in hermit mode and you're open to learning like the Hierophant and you're open to confronting because the Seven of Wands is very much a confrontational card. You're open to confronting whatever is hidden, whatever is toxic in the situation, whatever is the demon in your situation, then you are the one who's able to change it. You are the one who's able to transform it in the same way that the magician is an alchemist that changes an element into something else or from nothing gives you something, you know, rub it out of the hat, whatever it is. But this is quite tough. To get the Eight of Cups in a reading is always to be faced with, do I need to drop this? Do I need to walk away? Always, because it's an exit card. It can be that you walk away from one aspect of something or you distance yourself. Yeah, look, you get the Nine of Swords coming in. And the Nine of Swords is keeping you awake at night or worrying about something, a feeling of stress about something. So you can have this about an institution that you work for or a hierarchy that is crushing you. You can have it for a relationship where you feel like you are not, you feel like you're on the begging end or you feel like you're not aware, but you are aware and you're fighting for the truth about something. The Nine of Swords is where all of those swords hang above your head and mess with your Gemini mind. And remember that as a Gemini, apart from, you know, astral travel and being able to be in two places at once, which is terribly weird, but something that Geminis can do. As a Gemini, your brain is like a very fine tuned machine. The cogs are working all the time. It's, da -da 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 -da, you know, flitting for this, flitting for that going through this, going through that, processing information, synthesizing it. If you start off with the worry train, you go to all the stations as a Gemini, it's calling it all stations, okay? You need to make what is at the moment mental up here in the ether, can't quite put your finger on it, you need to make it um, carnal you need to make it of flesh you need to make it real in order to be able to understand it we have the knight of swords which i'm very pleased to see because this is good old-fashioned information coming in okay knight of swords is rushing in towards the nine of swords which says this is everything that you're up in your head about this is all the things you're imagining might be happening the strategies you're trying to come up with but I am going to give you some information that you need. So you're going to find, Gemini, that during this next few weeks, that you, the universe is going to gift you some information about this, whether this comes to you through a person, a conversation, it's a sword card. So it's your kind of thing, you know, it's communication. So whether this comes to you through a letter, an email, a missive, um, a text, something of social media or a face-to-face -face conversation or even a dream, but in that dream someone says something, you are going to get almost the key to the door to be able to at least unlock it and have a look, okay? At the moment I'm channeling you being on the outside, you're in a corridor, you can't even get the door open. Yeah, hanged man. Now, this hanged man energy is very important. It's also right underneath the hermit. The hermit, the devil, let's say, is a yang card. It's active. The hermit is a yin card. It's passive. Hanged man is so yin. I mean, it's like the most passive card of the entire deck. You will experience periods of time which are blank with this person, this situation. 
whether this is to do with a work situation, a love situation, or your own life situation, you will experience times where you don't know where it's going. It's not just, oh, you unlock the key and then all the information floods in and suddenly you know. It's not like that. It's one step forward, two steps back, but you're still making progress, okay? I'm trying to do the maths on that. I hope you're making progress. There will at times be no sense to it. And also you will be very keen for it to move faster than it does. Don't give in to that. The hanged man tells you, see things from a different angle, hang around here for a bit, don't push for change, look around you, look at everything, push the envelope, look into the corners. Right. God, oh yes. Next card we get, how many mages are you getting as well? Justice. Very nice to see it at this point, okay? You will find out what you need to know. Not all straight away. In fits and starts. But nevertheless, there is a karmic balancing act going on with the universe. That's why the universe is saying, it's time for you to confront this. It's time for you to work out if you need to walk away from it or whether you need to walk towards it. But you can't just hang around doing neither, okay? Your powers are coming to you so that you can create a different outcome, so that you can be creative even. Information's coming to you, fits and starts, but don't be afraid of the times when it seems like nothing is happening. Very, very important. Justice is a really powerful card. It's evening the score, but it's also allowing you to see what you need to see, which you know there's something that you need to see, but at the same time, you can't quite see it. Five of Pentacles. Interesting because there's often a doorstep and in some um, decks there's a key to the door, isn't there? Five of Pentacles is again, it, it goes with the Hermit. It's a feeling of, I would like this to be safe and comfortable. I would like to do this by chatting to all my friends about it. I would like to obtain comfort about making this decision. Unfortunately, it's not that kind of a deal. I'd love to say it was, but it's not what I'm getting. I'm getting hermit, I'm getting some solitude, I'm getting absolutely taking the difficult high road here. Because it would be easier just to continue in the confusion of the situation as it is, but you know there's something more to it. So if you try to do that, I just don't think the universe is going to reward you with anything. You're on your own with this, but that's a very powerful place to be. The magician is number one because you can create something, something new. You can change this energy. Nice. Another major arcana, the chariot. The chariot is being pulled in two different directions, but as a Gemini, you're built for that. You can ride two horses with one backside as a Gemini. No one else can, but you can. There will be times when you will not know right from wrong in this situation, and that are the, those are the times when you're gonna learn the most. You're gonna be pulled in one direction, then the other, okay? Make use of that. It's very, very useful to you. Let's have a love oracle card for you. In the extended reading, I am going to use, we're going to do the love reading in the extended reading. I'm going to use um, the Scarlet Rose Tarot for some of it. And then loads of other decks that I don't know yet, because sometimes I just like get a feeling and think, oh, I'm going to grab that deck. But we're going to look into the shadow side as well because we have the devil in the and um, on the table. Although I rather like it, we still need to look at it and the shadow side. Okay. We have the garden. I love the garden as your love card. 
The garden is all about what are you putting into the garden? What are you planting? What are you hoping for? What work are you doing? And what do you do with the smelly manure and the compost, which makes everything grow, okay? I'm gonna go grab myself another drink. Go and get yourself a cup of tea. It's the first link in the description box and leave me a comment if this resonated with you, okay? I'll see you on the other side. Namaste.